Well, hi there. I wasn't going to make a video about this because I just went to this incredible event uh, hosted by Snake Discovery that featured a host of incredible YouTube personalities. And all of them, I think, are better at making this type of a video than I am. So I wasn't going to make a video, but I did have such a great time and I met so many incredible people and I'm really excited about the enclosure that I built. And uh, so I felt like I do need to make a video and just share a little bit about this with you guys. I, I, I want to tell you first, uh, well, this is our enclosure. I'm really excited to talk to you all about it. But first, I, I just want to talk about the people because there were so many great people. Emily and Ed, you know, they are just so wonderful, so down to earth. You know, I've, I've known them since before their channel really exploded. You know, we, we did our, our first, you know, collaboration with another reptile YouTuber. It was with them. And, um, you know, at the time, not too many people knew about either of our channels, but I just, I could see what they were doing and it was great. And I can tell you with all the success they've had, they're exactly the same people. They're, they're just awesome. And I couldn't be more excited about all that they're achieving and accomplishing and all the, the support and love that they've received from, from, from you guys. Also there, of course, was my good friend, Dave Kaufman. He was kind enough to be host to uh, myself and to Brian Cusco, who's also just one of the greatest people you'll ever meet in your whole life. I got to meet Dave's significant other, Annie, who I've got to say is one of the coolest people I've ever met in my whole life. And I can see why Dave is so smitten with her. They have a really awesome story. I don't know if he shared that ever on his channel, but she came to the build off and she's quite the artist. Brian obviously was there. What a great guy. And, and Dave, Brian and I actually got to go herping when I first got there and we found, well, actually quite a few cool species, but the most exciting one, at least for me, was my first Northern water snake. And in the area where we found it, Dave had been looking for literally decades. And that was the first time he'd ever found one. He was so excited, like a kid in a candy store. Everybody was allowed a partner in the build off. As it turns out, I was the only one who didn't end up having a partner. Uh, Dave had Annie. Brian had Aurora from Aurora Exotics, who has been one of the moderators in our live streams. She's totally awesome, and it was so fun getting to meet her in person. Garrett Hartle was there from Reach Out Reptiles, who's now become an old friend. I, I really, really like him. You know, my, my first impression of him, you know, he was almost a little intimidating because he is so intelligent and accomplished and, and just amazing at everything he does. He showed that once again in this build off. He's actually the one that I suspect will win the whole thing, even though for a while it looked like he was building nothing at all. He is just, he's just such a good guy, you know, and, and his, he's just got a good spirit about him. You know, he's, he's just a person, my whole family, we all adore him and uh, I'm looking forward to getting to meet the rest of his clan someday. Adam Wickens from Wickens Wicked Reptiles was there. This was my first time getting to meet him in person. And I gotta tell you, He's a really fun guy, really, really down to earth, funny, enjoyable, great to be around. It's cool to see how much success he's had. Tyler Ruggie and Maddie Smith were there. I, I got to meet them when I went to Tinley. I uh, got to hang out with them quite a bit in that Tinley visit and then even more this time. They are really neat people. Um, I just really like them. They're both very just kind and sincere and, and good. I, I really, really like them. It's, it's enjoyable every time I get to hang out with them. I got to meet Elle from Elle's Reptiles. I actually ran into her channel for the first time probably about a year ago and there's just something great about her. She's just great and I, that definitely transfers to your, your in-person interactions with her. She is who you think she's going to be and she's just kind and good and I'm, I'm excited to see what, what she does in the future. I got to meet Hunter Hauk who is just 15 years old and what an incredible 15 year old. I, I would hope that, that my kids, when they're his age, are you know, doing the kind of things he's doing because he's, he's really, really awesome, really down to earth, really intelligent and capable. And he, he's just, he's cool, he's cool. His channel's small, check it out. Jessica from Jessica's Animal Friends was there. She actually, I, I ended up working next to her the whole time. So it was fun just watching how her build went. She came very prepared. We were allowed one secret weapon, one thing that we would bring from home, and she brought a completed backdrop that she'd spent days and days on. And, you know, 
that's using your noodle. And then I got to meet Diane from Reptiliatus, who that's another channel that I've been watching for a while, uh, but I'd never met him in person. Really cool guy, really cool guy, really, really liked him. Definitely check out his channel. Check out all these channels. We'll have links to them down in the description. But now, I got to get to my enclosure build because I built this enclosure for what is mm, the greatest pet lizard in the world. I, I know I, I'm kind of notorious for saying that lots of animals are one of my favorites or one of the best pet reptiles. This is absolutely without question. If you can think of a better one, I really want to know what it would be because I can't even imagine how it could be better. This is the Emerald Tree Skink. They are great. Not only are they beautiful and reasonable to care for and they can live in a beautiful enclosure, which is important for this, but their personality is just not even realistic. Why would a little lizard act like this? They're so friendly. They adore human interaction. It's what they want to do. I can leave the doors open on the enclosure. They won't go anywhere. But if you walk up to the enclosure, they'll start jumping into the glass. They're just so excited to see you. They love people. And so I figure if you're going to win an enclosure build off, you've got to build it for the greatest pet reptile there is. And while I'm not sure this is the greatest of all pet reptiles, though I think it very well may be, this is certainly the best pet lizard. And so now I want to take you on a little tour of my enclosure and show off my secret weapon, which I think is the thing that puts this over the top beyond anything else. This enclosure, as you know, at first we had a great, a great contest, uh, a, a, a survivor style challenge with knowledge questions and then uh, a scavenger hunt and a puzzle build. It was so much fun. I, I really loved it. Even though we came in second, it was still super duper fun. If you haven't seen that yet, definitely check it out on Snake Discovery's channel and a number of others. There will be a whole playlist for videos coming from this event, and so you can check that out right there. The contest, the winners got first choice of a piece of backdrop, and there was something from Universal Rocks I really had my eye on. So when we lost, you could tell I tried hard. I tried hard because I really wanted this rock. It was amazing. And I feel so blessed because when the winners, black team, had picked their, their rocks and other decor items, that one was still left. And so I got this incredible rock. And now it was time to get to work. Now, I, before we got there, we were allowed to request any items we needed for enclosure build-off. And I had requested two 36-ounce bottles of Gorilla Glue, which Ed and Emily thought maybe I was just messing with them. They didn't know what you would do with a bunch of Gorilla Glue. I thought, because we've made a number of tutorials on how to use Gorilla Glue in enclosure builds and how, well, it's just amazing. In fact, if you haven't seen those, uh, here's the first one which really shows how you do it. And we've done a number of other ones as well. We'll have links to those down in the description. But I thought a lot of people would be using the Gorilla Glue technique because it is just the best. I recently built an enclosure using the sort of normal spray foam and silicone technique that almost everybody else used. And I vowed after doing that once, I'm like, never again, never ever again. And I'm, I'm very fortunate because the Gorilla Glue, you know, it's better for so many reasons, but one of them is it's faster. And, and that was really important because we only had six hours for this build and I was the only person working alone. Everybody else had a partner. I was all by myself. And so I essentially had to work twice as fast as everybody else and Gorilla Glue made that possible. So my partner was sort of Gorilla Glue. But I, I put on my first layer of Gorilla Glue. Everybody is like, what the heck are you doing? You know, this is just ridiculous. Why are, you, why are you putting that much Gorilla Glue in your enclosure? And then I put all my pieces on. I covered it in the substrate. I pushed it down for 30 minutes. Everybody is like, I have no idea what is happening here. Nobody seemed to know about using this technique. Everybody was using the silicone. And I can tell you that when I stood that enclosure up, and scraped off the back and everybody saw what had been created. They were like, well, that's it. I am never using silicone again. Like everybody saw the light. So please vote for me this year because next year everybody's gonna do this. But this year, it's, it's my little secret. And so I got the first panel done and I decided I still had enough time. I was gonna do something I've never done before, but I will probably do a lot in the future because of how cool this was, which is I did three sides. So not just the back, but the two sides, which means I had to do the whole procedure three times and I couldn't do them simultaneously because I had to get each one set up, but it was so worth it because look at how amazing 
this turned out to be. Of course, the Gorilla Glue backdrop with the Universal Rocks and the incredible pieces of cork and just other uh, decor items that were available, that turned out looking really cool just on its own. I made this bioactive using isopods and springtails and some amazing uh, I put in a false bottom. I used some of these substrates that were available to us from a number of great donors, including Josh's Frogs, who's been a sponsor on this channel as well. And then I had to put in my secret weapon. And my secret weapon was a T-Rex. Because that is the coolest thing that has ever existed. And I had to think, what is something that is very, very me? to put in this enclosure so that somebody who has that at home, they'll be like, that is a Clint enclosure, a T-Rex. Now I got this really cool T-Rex model at the Mall of America the day before. And when I opened it up, it was big and awesome, but not all that realistic looking. And my problem is I don't like anything that doesn't look real in my enclosures. Uh, you know, I, there were fake a shelf fungi available to us, but I only used the real ones, which I think looked really cool. I did include those light up fake mushrooms, which are so cool and they look really realistic and awesome. And they added just a little whimsical element to these two dark corners that were present in our enclosure. But the T-Rex, I had to make it look real. And so I weathered it using actually Gorilla Glue on substrate. And then instead of just standing it up, which is what everybody thought I was gonna do, I buried it. I made it look like a T-Rex that maybe died a few years ago and the, the scavengers and, and things had been eating it away and so they'd exposed all the bone and it was partially buried. But if you pay attention, poof, there it is, a T-Rex, because this is Skinkrassic Park. And so I just wanna say thank you to everybody who made this possible, to the other creators that were there. Of course, to Ed and Emily from Snake Discovery for putting this together because it was amazing. If you like what I created, please consider jumping over there and, and voting for it. But of course, vote for the one that you think was the best because everybody did such an incredible job and I was just thankful to be a part of it. As always, like and subscribe and we hope to see you real soon. I have arrived at Snake Discovery and look what I found! It's a real life Ed! I just stand here all the time. You, so people can, I can greet them. You once were like a secret flower. But now, now we get to see you I've all the time. Worn off. The luster is worn off. Oh, no, it has not. <laughs> and yeah, it's nice that they've got this robot edge right here yep. at the entrance to I, greet I'll everyone take, who I'll comes. I money to talk, so. Oh, yeah. I will try to get some of that. <laughs> this is the reptile experience. And this store is really, really cool. I really wish it was closer so I didn't have to fly home with this stuff because I would actually buy a lot of stuff here today. And they sell animals and all sorts of really nice equipment and enclosures. <laughs> Man, what have you here? Belly. So this is a northern water snake. I've been coming to this area for decades because I heard rumors that these were here. I never saw them. This is the first one I've ever seen here. He's musking me. Oh, that is just cologne, but look at that belly. Those half moons. Man, this is gorgeous. Whew, that is awesome.